What's up, everybody? It's your favorite. We need to jettison the waiter. We'll never make it to Cybertron's favorite nerd. And today we are looking at DX9's Chigger, which is their take on G1 Decepticon triple changing Astro Train. This is actually the third time I've had to do this. Speaking of which, why did he do the uh, jettison some weight? Or like, should weight matter in space? Doesn't really matter, I guess. Anyway, so he comes up with one accessory. It plugs in here. We'll talk about that first. Just uh, it plugs in. There's like a, it plugs on on either side, maybe. If it's upside down, will it plug in here? No. Or at least I can't get it to. But it does plug in at least there. And it looks a little silly on there, but it does have a place to go. You can fold this out on a hinge here. Fold that up. Fold this out for the gun. Fold that down. And you got a little bit of silver paint on there and on here. Overall kind of nicely done and very reminiscent of the G1. It also uh, transforms into a stand of sorts, um, and uh, I think it goes just like this. This doesn't seem like it'll bend to 90 degrees, but if you just give her a little, a little bit of love, uh, maybe it doesn't. Yeah, I did. I'm sure. There it is. It will go. Just you see it, um, and it turns to a stand for the for the. Shuttle, which is kind of cool. So, looks a little silly in train mode. Works great in the other two. Well, we'll talk about that. But, looks awesome as a stand base. So, the other thing here is the train. I guess it's train-ish. You know, it, it's kind of like close enough. It, it, it does kind of look like something that you would get out of a, uh, um, a store where your product would be put in a black plastic bag. Um... But it, it's kind of, it's close enough, I kind of feel like. If, if you bought this for train mode, you know, like, oh man, I really want him in train mode, then you might be disappointed. But if that's why you bought him, I don't quite get you anyway. But I think it's pretty good. Um, not hateful. Tons of paint. You know, the black windows with the silver lining, really nicely done. Silver here, black here, silver, black, silver, red. Like, there is tons of color breakup. I think they did a pretty good job with it. Overall, it cleans up quite nicely all the way around. Um, so I can dig it. A uh, Decepticon symbol split right there from Repro Labels will kind of push it over the top. Um, I think it's I think it's kind of close enough. Let's go ahead and address this other elephant in the room real quick, and and then we'll we'll move on. So this piece here is held on with friction onto there, and you take it off. And you have this. Um, it is utilized in both other modes, but it is parts forming. It, it's it's minor parts forming, you know, but it is parts forming. If that's a huge deal for you, um, then that that sucks. It's not a huge deal for me. I, I I don't really mind it at all, really, especially with how it's utilized. So, but I am just bringing it to your attention. I contemplated how I was going to do this because I've shot it a couple different ways. I'm going to try to do it straight through without a montage so you can see how sometimes it can be fairly frustrating. But basically it's broken into a couple sections. So open this back part out here, these like side panels, and then you can pull this whole piece out on a double hinge. It accordions out. That's one piece. This is the other piece right here, and this is on a hinge. So just recognize that. And... The other piece of these legs, which tab in very tightly into this black section there. Okay, so then separate the legs, and then this is the last piece, which is the arms. And you have to rotate um, the hips almost straight away so get the arms out of the way to give yourself the clearance to rotate these hips 
All right. Whew. Now you're kind of in a, in, a, in a position to work. So get the legs out to the side. Slide these parts and then bend them back and tab them into one another. Now try to keep yourself oriented. This is going to be the top. So I'll tell you something else. You can square off the hips and we'll do the same thing to this side. Spread these, tab them in, and then you want the purple off to the side, and I'll show you why later. Um, so 90 degrees there, and then we'll go ahead and get this section here straightened out. So this piece is on a double hinge here, so you can bring that around. As you bring it around, there's this section here which is on a hinge which folds forward and then as you bring this around there's another piece here that's on a ball joint that if you come out and has a small little tab and tab it in and, tr and just hope that it'll stay tabbed. You'll have to clean this section of it up uh, probably ten times while you're transforming it. So tab that in, bring the nose in and then just you know make it look like a space shuttle, right? So uh, this part, the back part goes back and this front part comes forward. And the back part does tab in. It's, there it is. So we'll do the same on the other side. I know it's hard to see. Stay oriented. It'll help. Bring this down. And See, I've already got. See, I've already got this oriented. All right, this is the top. So, purple on the side like that. So, same thing. We want purple on the side. Bring that around. Everything swivels, so it it, it gets a little convoluted at times. Um, so, same on this side. Double fold it around. As you do so, fold this part forward. Try to get you a better angle. And then bring this part up and tab her in and then like that fold this around make it look like a space shuttle the best you can and then tab all this together and you got that section done. This part here comes up and forward. As you do so, you want to you have these squared off so you have this nice gap in there, so to speak, which you can stick his head straight down into which is on a hinge here and then another hinge there. And his face should be covered up in the end, but if it's not just flip it around. I can't remember exactly. We'll save this bit of business for uh, closer to the end. And now this, which can eat you up. The arms are um, kind of where this thing stops being fun. But let's see if we can't figure it out. Does that go like that? Okay, almost forgot one section. Bring out this. This will help you get the arms oriented. And then like so. Then you're gonna bend this around and that will put everything where it needs to be once you get that lined up. And then you can fold this little piece in there. And then we'll clean her up towards the end. So same thing. And then these pieces 
tab into those gray pieces right there. Good to go. Here, open up this. Bring these out. And fold that down there. Same on this side. Clean her up again. Bring the tail down. Unfold your wings here. Same on the other side. Fold that around. Tab in. And more or less, that's it. So let me get it cleaned up and then we'll, we'll show some more things. One of the big problems with this is that these wings don't tab in. They have tabs, but they don't tab in. And I'm getting stress marks on mine from trying to, uh, like, you see the, the tension that is putting out that piece there is become small and then there's that bigger gap there because it's putting pressure at this connection. So that sucks. That's unfortunate because otherwise they did a really great job and all it would have taken was the right size notch up in there. As far as I can tell, maybe I'm doing something wrong, but... Uh, I can't seem to get it to tab in. Um, so otherwise, uh, nice line work in the, in the mold. Um, cleans up really well, all things considered. There's line work here in this little bit here. I wish they hadn't done that because now it's going to make putting a wrapper label there a little bit more difficult. But whatever. All these back here, um, actually, no, just the top two. They do move a little bit. Um, but... Yeah, I like the yellow. Little things like this red paint there and that little yellow stripe there really helps for me. I, I, I like, I appreciate little things like that. It does it for me. I like, I like the vents. Um, it has a couple options for display. These fold down. They're like landing gear. And then uh, I'll come untabbed a little bit there. But you take the gun and you plug that in there. And... Uh, fold this landing gear down, obviously, and there that is, you know, if you wanted it to, to be displayed that way. Your other option is if you open this up here to that 90 degree point, it should theoretically, I feel like it'll go a little bit further, maybe not. Uh, that's not the best hinge in the world. You take this, which is the stand, plug that in, and then you have a nice little, a nice little stand. You can rotate it. Kind of give the maybe a little bit better look, you know, and that's cool. I appreciate that, and I think it's a good use of that parts forming element of it. I, it I'm not mad at that. I, I appreciate the option, to be honest with you. All right, so let's get him into his final form. We'll take that off, which is possibly a little too easy. And once again, we'll we'll break down our sections. All right, so uh, that pretty much stays as it is these pieces rotate up mm -mm. clean that up there put your uh, little thruster away cover her up same on this side 
cover her up. Fold that flap in there. Undo what you've done down here. Gotta put these away like before. Oh, let me show you that. So when you untab it here, you're not going to be able to move it. So just swivel it out and then fold that piece in and around. And now we're back to our sections like we were talking about before. So fold this part up here, fold the tail in, and we're back to that point, and we'll work on the feet. So split here, purple to the front. The purple is nice because you can really use it as a point of reference. Wheel stay to the side, swivel the, that aspect of it there, pull down a little bit for clearance to fold it up, open this side get you better view. so that you can fold the nose cone back around and while you're here you can flip the landing gear up this untabs and folds back in and then that folds back around there and then they pretty much leave it to you to fix this bit of business on the back um, which is less than great but if you get it to there that just kind of sits there and then this just kind of hangs down and uh, honestly that's the end of it which is not ideal right once again pull this out a little bit giving yourself the clearance wheels to the side swivel that around fold this up Open this up so that you can rotate this to the back. In the process, you can fold that piece down there. Rotate your landing gear around. Fold this up, bring her back. And on the back, you just kind of clean it up the best you can. stay oriented all right let's raise the camera once again it's about kind of staying oriented you flip this part out and straighten that piece there okay and this needs to go there so just kind of figure that out you know do what you have to do in order to make that line up. They should be squared off, relatively squared off. I do kind of hate this. The arms in general, um, it's just not my favorite piece of engineering because you see a lot of this, like the feet and stuff, like it's kind of fun and it's it's well engineered, but it's rather intuitive. You got to kind of make it look a certain way. The arms, you know what they're like? They're like they're they're a hindrance on a, on a on an otherwise a good time. You know, they're like the guy who's a bummer at an amusement park. Yeah. Looks like it's gonna rain. Perfect. So loud. Oh yeah, soaking wet. Great time. Lines. And it's hot now. Uh, two beers and two waters. Thanks. Uh, Thirty-four dollars, please. How much? Thirty-four dollars. It's uh, two and two. Yes, thirty-four dollars. Just keep it. D sir, I already, I already opened the beer, sir. Sir, you forgot your baby. There. Good grief. Okay. 
And I wish I could say that from here it gets better, but it does not. So, the main problem is that we need to get this piece folded back onto itself. And it's just not easy. And you kind of just have to mess around until you find that sweet spot. And if you rotate this so that you can bend that a little bit, I have found that it kind of helps. Um, and once you get this here, you just pull the hand out and you're basically, you're basically done. Oh, one other thing. This doesn't have the clearance, so you gotta push it down and then slide it around. And this is another part. So that's the tab that tabs in there. It tabs in at an angle and creates a funky looking forearm kind of in general. And one arm done. Now we'll work on the second one. Once again, just try to get it so that, like, try to find the elbow joint and then try to get it so that you can bend it, which means that you usually have to swivel this to get it to a certain point, which it'll come around. But it's it's just finding that elbow joint. It's. I wish I could say it was intuitive. I wish I could say that it's fun, um, but it is none of those things. Push in, fold around, plug in, rotate, clean up, and then take your parts forming piece. It goes in here, creates a little cradle. This comes up and tabs into the back. And there you have him. Clean up the hips. And then you have one last option which is this pelvis piece. So you can go with this look, which kind of looks more cohesive, or you can do this move, which reveals a lot more, but when you try to put them in any kind of pose other than standing straight up and down, it starts to look weird. The head is on a ball joint, I think, yeah. Um, nice paint applied. We got yellow that's done really well. We have red eyes and it appears to the red might be on black which is ideal and then we have the vents that are painted and then the whole face is painted silver uh, if you're a painter or a customizer a little bit of black wash like right in the mouth and all that kind of stuff will uh, will definitely make that pop a little bit so to speak um, shoulders are on ratchet universals um, the ratchets are forward and back and the and the uh, this is just on the hinge the in and out Double jointed elbows, but but one of the double joints is at the bicep, but it doesn't really matter. It gets you way more than 90 degrees, and then it has both a bicep swivel and a forearm swivel, which is more for transformation. Wrist is on a hinge here, and then a swivel as well. Thumb is on a ball peg. Finger is on two hinges, and then the other set of fingers is on one hinge. When they start to articulate individual fingers, I prefer that they do it this way. I'm not a big fan of all the fingers articulated, but that's just me and my sensibilities. We have red paint here. We have black though from the, the train and stuff split up there. It does have this big hollow gap in there in the forearm, which is extremely unfortunate and uh, kind of throws off the whole thing. Once again, the arms are the constant issue. Chest is really well done. Silver paint, yellow paint, black paint, purple paint, red paint, a lot of metallic flex in it. And the uh, only problem is, is like I'm getting some chippage on my paint down in there. Um, it does have a waist swivel, however, because of this look here, you know, you start to lose it a little bit. Now, if you flip that up, you know, you get the full range, no problem. Uh, same on the other side as far as the arms are concerned. 
the hips are just universals, not ratcheted. They are small, so that's probably part of the problem, but it would have been nice to have small ratchets in there or something because they just they don't hold their own weight. And that is because we have die cast in here and we have die cast in the wheels. I think this is die cast anyway. I could be wrong. I'm not good at that, but yeah, that's an issue. Uh, we have a thigh swivel. We have a knee swivel, or if you want to call it a shin swivel, which you know I think is a ridiculous joint. But we have it for transformation here, which is fine. We have ratcheted knees that get you 90 degrees. And then we have ankle swivel, tilt, and rocker. So pretty much anything you could want there in the, in the ankle department. Uh, we'll talk about his accessory for a moment. You just take this and then you pull the handle down, pull the scope up, pull the barrel out, rotate the landing gear in, put the barrel down. He does have a notch for it. It's buried at the top of the of the hinge on the fingers. Um, I am having a hell of a time uh, getting it to to wedge in, and that stinks. Um, so that to me is a fail and it, it's also like just once again the sculpt and the mold like here it's fine you see how they cut it in to match but if you swivel the, uh, yeah, you're done you're done so that stinks he can't hold it but not great um, unless you really really mess with it and then even then I'm not 100% sold but uh, yeah that's him let's do some size comparisons weigh him do some final thoughts and get out of here he is beefy I just want to illustrate that he comes in at almost a pound, 0.92, here's MP11 at 0.71. Using the same point of reference uh, size-wise, there he is next to MP11, and uh, Starscream's head comes up to about the top of his chest. So, he's a big boy. Final thoughts-wise, he, here's the issues. The arms are just not fun. They're a pain. They're just generally troublesome. We kind of lose a little bit of likeness in train mode, and it would have been really nice for the wings to have tabbed in in shuttle mode. Also, it would have been nice for this, something to have been done with that back kibble on the heel, rather than just them saying it's kind of good enough, kind of that Friday at 4.30 thing again. But my main issue with this guy is that although he's well-painted, and although he's a good size, and although the transformation is fairly intricate, there's still something about the feel of this thing that doesn't quite feel masterpiece. It's getting closer. It's a lot closer than their take on Mirage, I feel like, to a masterpiece effort. But there's still something missing, and I can't quite put my finger on it. I don't know if it's the grade of the plastic or the way the plastic feels. You know, it doesn't have that maybe that finish of a masterpiece, but there's something off about it in terms of it being a masterpiece. It doesn't have what Fans Toys has when they say this is a masterpiece. There's just something that seems to fall a bit short, but I can't quite put my finger on it. Also, as a quick side note, because of the way that the abdomen works and the way that that panel kind of flips down, you can see that mine is up. He tends to look better in more stoic poses than he does in action poses. When you put him in the more action poses, he starts to fall apart a little bit. But I will tell you that he is a lot of fun, and the more I mess with him, the more I enjoy him. I've had to shoot this review three times, so I've actually put my hands on him a bit more than I have a lot of other stuff, just to kind of really get, wrap my mind around it, because at first I was like, man, this is not what I wanted, but the more I mess with him, the more I kind of enjoy him. So I recommend that you really give this guy a shot if you get him. Don't let that first impression steer you away. Give him a, give him a, few, give him a few days, muck about with him a bit, kind of realize all the things that he does have going for him, which are a lot. His paint is top shelf. It's really well applied. There's a lot of color breakup. It's not boring, and this is a lot of gray. It could easily have been a very visually boring figure, and it's not. There's a lot going on here. He's extremely well articulated. Everything swivels, so that, that kind of helps in the articulation department, and the engineering is really over the top. It's a lot more than, say, the invisible figure, which was kind of like, uh, I don't know, it's like a, a, it'll do. You know, and, and unfortunately, this guy kind of goes in the good enough category also, but there is a lot more here to sink your teeth into than Invisible. So I still feel like DX9 is improving. I'm happy with my purchase, but $150 is a big price tag, and it's not going to feel like Wheeljack. It's not. But it's going to feel a lot better than Invisible. So if you were happy with Invisible, I think you'll be more than happy with this guy. 
if you kind of tend to hold your nose up a little bit when it comes to Masterpiece figures, I'm here to tell you I don't blame you. I'm kind of in your same boat, and I'm not sure if this guy will do it for you. But he is, for better or for worse, good enough. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.